Welcome to Chris's Storytelling Corner. I'm Christopher Moldong, and today I'm going to do a movie review for the anime movie Mirai. Next time I'll have a manga review for Skate Beat Volumes 35 and 36, an anime review for the Hunter Exam arc of Hunter by Hunter, and a movie review for the Korean movie Unstoppable. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. I'd really like to hear from you guys as well, so leave any comments. And make sure to subscribe and share this channel as well. So the way that this is going to work is that I'm going to give a detailed recap of the movie Mirai and then give my thoughts. As far as an, an initial grade goes, I'll give it an A. There, there's a lot of things they did artistically that I liked. And um, just other things about it that I will explain in my thoughts. So uh, here's the synopsis. Um... Kun is a boy born to an executive mother and an arctic father and they live in a stepped house where um, Kun's father designed around a tree so there's like the there's like the main house steps that go down where the steps are there's also this like tree and then there's kind of like this play area I guess this room that like Kun kind of plays in um so, and Kuhn spends his day playing with the family dog Yuko and his beloved toy train sets. When Kuhn is four, his sister Mirai, which in Japanese it means future, is born. And he's happy at first when his mother returns home with her. But he just grows jealous when his parents focus all their attention on her. And he refuses to acknowledge that he's Mirai's big brother. And has to be pretty much restrained from hitting her. He lashes out first at his mother and then at his father when he becomes a stay-at-home dad working from home while his mother returns to work. After one of his tantrums, Kuhn stomps off to the house's garden where he meets a strange man who claims to be the prince of the house. Um, the man whines about how he lost all the parents' attention when Kuhn was born and then Kuhn realizes that the man is actually Yuko the dog turned into a human. Kuna even finds Yuko's tail on the man and he removes it and places it on himself and transforms into this dog morph. Later on, a calm down Kuhn tells his parents about he had so much fun running around the house as a dog and he relays Yuko's complaints about how they treat him. Girls Day rolls around and the family sets up the traditional dolls to wish Mariah good luck. Uh, but they forget to put the dolls away at the ho the holiday ends, and they have to do it in a very specific way. Uh, Kuhn gets frustrated again with his parents' focus on Mariah, and then he runs back to the garden. The, the tree is in the garden, too. This time he meets a middle school aged girl who claims to be Mariah from the future. She has gone back in time out of concern that every day the dolls are not put away adds one year before she can marry. After a lot of like bumbling around, future Mariah is able to put the dolls away with help from Kuhn and a humanized Yuko. Kuhn's grandmother shows him photos of his mother when she was Kuhn's age, but he continues to... Uh, pretty much be mean and, and intolerant with his mother by leaving his toys everywhere on the floor. He runs out to the garden again where he's transported a couple of decades to the past. In town he runs into a little girl who he recognizes from the photos as his mother. So it's a young version of his mother. Uh, the young girl is angry at her own mother for re refusing to give her a pet cat. And they return to her home where the little girl says that things would look better all messed up. And then they start dumping toys all over the floor and food all over the table and just mess up the house. Uh, but then her mother, Kuhn, who's Kuhn's grandmother, returns home. Kuhn leaves out the back door, but he overhears his grandmother scolding the little girl. Um, and pretty much stop, she sobs like a bunch of times. Kuhn returns to his own time and now shows some sympathy for his mother. Kuhn gets a bike with training wheels for a present, but wants to learn how to ride the bike without them, uh, without the training wheels after seeing some older kids on the bike, or uh, on bikes at the park. His father helps him as best he can, but Kuhn just can't seem to be able to, 
you know, ride correctly and keep the bike upright. He's so back home. Kuhn runs back to the garden where he's transported to a workshop in rural Japan many decades ago. A young man with an injured leg introduces Kuhn to the many horses near his shop. He, um, he takes Kuhn, who was initially afraid, on a ride on one of the horses and then on his motorcycle. Um, he goes back in his own time uh, and days later. Kuhn successfully rides his bike using what he learned from his pre previous rides. Kuhn's grandmother shows him more photos, revealing the man to be his great-grandfather, who worked on motorcycles and engines in his youth, but who died just recently. Finally, the family decides to set out for a day trip, but Kuhn throws a fit over not being able to wear his favorite yellow pants and then runs off to hide. When he comes out, he finds his whole family gone. In the garden, he finds a train station with a train approaching. A young man in the station warns him not to board the train, but Kuhn does any, the, uh, like rides it anyways. The train takes Kuhn to Tokyo Station, but there he panics about being all alone. He finds a lost and found attendant. He needs the name of a relative to page for, but Kuhn realizes that he doesn't even know the name of his own parents. The attendant sends Kuhn to a dragon-shaped bullet train, telling them that if, he can't find, if they can't find anyone to pick him up, he must board that train to take him to Lonely Land. He spots uh, Baby Mirai about to board the train and rescues her, um, pleading that they not be set on this train. At this point, Kuhn finally acknowledges that he is Mirai's older brother and the attendant can now page her. Baby Mirai disappears and future Mirai shows up to take Kuhn home by flying through the air. The land in the tree which houses all the family folklore. Kuhn sees that his family was too physically weak to ride a bike when he was young, or his father, excuse me, uh, when he was young, when, and also when Yuko left uh, his dog mom to become a pet, he sees that, uh, that his mother stopped liking cats uh, when she saw a stray one kill a bird. Uh, the World War II battle that left his great-grandfather's leg injured, and the race he ran to win the heart of Kuhn's great-grandmother. Kuhn also sees a feature where the young man at the station turns out to be a teenage Kuhn, and back at his own time, Kuhn decides that he can go on the trip just fine with blue pants instead of his yellow pants, and he is now reconciled with his parents and with his sister Mirai. And that's the end of the movie. So, before we get into my thoughts on the movie, I'd like to plug my author's website at www.chrismaldon.com, and you can read a new blog post on there every week. Uh, for a sample of my writing, you can read my fancy short story, The Wizard, The Shadow, and the Tree, which uh, placed in the Dream Quest 1 writing contest. So, it actually sends, and a link to read it will be provided on the page description. It'll, um, it's a link to the Dream Quest 1 website which actually has my story in it also do you like anime do you like action adventure fantasy then buy my book the mustard prince in the convict kingdom for just $4.99 via ebook on amazon.com or on my author's website links to buy it will be provided on the page description please also subscribe to this channel as that really help me out so let's get some thoughts on the movie i give this movie an a um I found that the movie was pretty minimalist, actually. Uh, the, the amount of characters in the movie was pretty low. I'd say, as, as far as major characters go, I mean, you had, like, the family, older Mirai, and the great-grandfather, and that's the dog, and, and who's part of the family. That's kind of it. Um, most of the movie actually just pl takes place in the house, you know, they didn't really go far. I mean, they went to the park. They went, I mean, some of the fancy world, yeah, but in the past and whatnot, but a lot of it just takes place in the house. Artistically, I mean, they did a lot with, in a sense, very little, you know. Um, and I appreciate it. And it's just really realistic. It's artistic, but relatable. And that's why I really liked it. I mean, it really is. Coon, who's what, like four or something like that? Two, four, or something like that. And he's just at that age, you know? Like, and it's just him coping 
with having this new baby and they just made this movie about it that was just fantastic Let's talk about some of the characters Coon um you know it's funny the, the movie's come to right but the main character is Coon you know and Coon is it's great in a sense that he's just a realistic young boy of that age in a new situation and he acts a he acts the way you expect him to act. He throws a lot of tantrums. He's very emotional. You know, he, he's not in an age where, he, where there, there's a lot of logic or, or reason. He doesn't understand that concept yet. He's just too young. But what's kind of cool is then he gets into his fancy, these fancy worlds where, in a sense, it, it's kind of like he can't re really reach his parents to figure out what's going on but these fancy worlds do and the characters in these like fancy worlds are kind of like his older self in a sense like or like a more logical and reasonable self you know it's like okay he can't ride a bike well great grandfather is going to show you what it's like to ride you know a horse a, a motorcycle you know um and uh, what other it, it, just stuff like that and, and it's like this more reasonable way of looking at things you know and, and a more adult way of looking at things actually if you if you think about it the, the fancy world really is more of like the adult way of looking at things coon is the, the childish way of looking at things if, if you really want to draw that like or draw that parallel I guess um and other and I, I kind of appreciate that he is just a kid you know um in a lot of these anime movies the kid is kind of like the hero and, and in this case the kid Kuhn is just a kid you know um some criticism with like a Miyazaki movie I love Miyazaki movies one of the biggest problems is that, like, you have these kids that are the adults, and the adults are the kids. Um, Spirit Away is a good example of that. I love Spirit Away, by the way. Don't get me wrong. Okay, it's actually one of my favorite anime movies out there. But it's like the main character, she, like, gets spirited away and has to work. <laughs> like, literally go to work, and the parents become pigs. You know, I, I mean, like, and in, in this case, you know, I understand that, that they all, you see in a lot of movies where the, the kid is just kind of the adult and, and, and the, the, the adults are, are kind of like the kids. And, and I think this was a little more realistic though, you know, and like the adults were the adults. Okay. The mom had to go to work. Okay. She just got pregnant. She's going back to work. The dad kind of you know had to hold it down and he's not used to it and, and it, it was just as much of an adjust you, you know it's kind of cool about this movie is is, is it, this movie is it's not coon it's not just coon story it's at it's the family story and that's the great thing and i think the tree and and everything really exemplifies that you had mirai the baby mirai who's just kind of there older mirai is She's pretty, like, I want to say, like, a bit more, like, she's, like, what, mid, I couldn't tell if she's middle school or high school, um, but, like, she's the one that saves Mirai, you know, the older character at the very end, um, you know, from the train station, it's older Mirai that saves the child, you know, it's, it's not the other way around. I mean, it's always the... I mean, like, Coon does save baby Mirai, but then older Mirai saves Coon. You know? Um, so much to say about her. I mean, she is very much a teenager. Still thinks like one, but, like, is still more mature than, than Coon. Um, I also like Yuko the dog. You know, it's funny. He, he gets a story. You know? It's just kind of like, okay, he was eventually you know he had to go away from his parents 
and at one time he was the head of the household he's the one that like everyone cared about until Kuhn came and things became s cyclical you know when we're and then everyone started paying attention to Kuhn and then when Mariah came along everyone started paying attention to Mariah and so it's just it's really funny it's also funny that Yuko as a dog well it, it's pretty smart <laughs> he actually like he obviously understands human language like he opens his eyes and, and reacts when they said they're gonna get him more food and stuff like that like it, he actually does understand human language and, and whatnot um and like I said before like the story's just in a sense, it's just as much about the parents, too. The dad, you know? I mean, he's this architect. You can tell back in the day he couldn't ride a bike. And he, there's something about him that is a bit... Um, I guess reserved, I, I, I guess. You know? I, I don't get the impression he, he wears the proverbial pants in the family. The, mom say, the mother seems to. But it is kind of like his story, too. You know? He, he's adjusting to his new life. He, he's the one that has to stay home now. He's dealing with the kid. He still has to work, though. And then he has to deal with uh, Mariah. And then he also has to do the housework, you know. And it's got to be said, running a house and a family is a full-time job in itself. And now Kuhn, Kuhn's father kind of has to do, like, two jobs, you know. And then Kuhn's mother, going back to work, and just kind of adjusting to things as well, um, you know. That she now has, has a girl, um, and, and Kuhn seems to be forgotten, and, and she's kind of juggling what's going on at the house, still kind of watching over what's going on in the house, watching over the kid, and then she has her own job as well. And then the story is also as it was Kuhn's great grandfather. And, and it's just kind of like his, uh, you know, he went through World War II. He, he couldn't walk. He's still riding bikes, uh, motorcycles. He can still ride a horse. And, um, you know, he, he raced the, the great-grandmother back then so they can get married and whatnot. And it, it all just ties in. And they used the tree to tie in everything. The tree holds a family legacy. And he kind of saw it at the end, and that was really cool. And, I, and that's why I like this movie a lot. I mean, they, they tied it in together. Didn't necessarily beat you over the head with anything, you know. You, you kind of see the family tie there. Um, symbolically, the tree is in the center of the house. You know, it's always there. It's it's a it's a, something of a foundation, you know. And it is something of like representative of the foundation of the family. I mean, he, they designed a house around the tree, you know. I, I can't really tell. Like, um, I remember Coon's great grandfather raced, you know, like his then the girl he wanted to marry, which was then like Coon's great grandmother, to a to a tree, you know. So I didn't actually know if that was the same tree or not. Um, could have been. I, I'm not 100% sure about that. I could be wrong about that, but definitely, um, I, I really like what they did, you know, just tying that all together. Um, trees have roots, you know, that, that this family legacy has roots. They show, they, they show it starting with Coon's great grandfather in a sense. And then, like, the race, you know, and that, that's where everything starts. That's the root of wherever, you know, from then to now and, and where their family is going. Um, art, artistically, it, it's it's really nice to watch. Um, like I said, they switch from reality to fantasy, and this is something that, like, anime does so well and why the medium of anime works well at times because they can easily they switch from one to another like all the time I mean you just see it in just like every every movie I've watched so far whether it's like fireworks or Miyazaki movie or whatnot can can go from reality to fancy just like that 
and to make that transition seamless. It's very hard to do in like other media, you know, regular movies and whatnot, but anime does it really well. It's cool that the fancy world parallels with the real world and what's going on with Coon. You know, it's like, oh, hey, I have this problem riding a bike. Oh, hey, I have this problem. You know, I'm lonely. Hey, um, I don't really like how my mom's treating me. And then the real, the fancy world kind of like parallels with what's going on with Kuhn. It makes you wonder, is this a real fancy world or is this like the mind of Kuhn? Is this like, what is it? Is it an artistic expression of how Kuhn should cope? Is it a coping mechanism? Is he coping, you know, is, is he going into this world in his mind? You know, to cope with what's going on, with, to cope with Mirai? Um, to cope with his mom, to cope with riding a bike, to cope with like this feeling of loneliness and acceptance, it, or, or did he actually go into the past? Did he actually like? And, and in a sense, it doesn't matter. You, you know, that's the cool thing. That that's the great thing about it. It doesn't actually matter what it is. It, it just is something that happens in the movie and it's fine and it's acceptable and it, it just relates to what's going on. The movie is really strongly poignant, you know, in that sense. You can just relate to Kuhn. Um, can relate to the family. You, you can relate to just what's going on. I mean, nothing earth shattering really happens except near the end. It looks like he's about to go away on the train to to Lonely World, you know, the the train to nowhere, pretty much. Um, but otherwise, um, you know, you can just relate to it uh, in, in that sense, you know. It, it's just like, at the end of the day, they go on a trip to, like, you know, like, what, catch bugs or something? <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I... I it's absolutely mundane what they are doing, you know, but like, you know, the mundane, it really also goes to show, in reality, sometimes the mundane is special, you know, and I think this movie kind of shows that as well, you know, it's just riding a bike that first time doing it, how hard it is, you know, and, and um, you know, just feeling neglected when you're a child and, and whatnot, when the new new baby's coming along, trying to, you know, just wanting the parents to play with you, and, and you know, it's just something you can kind of relate to. It's crazy that you can just make a whole movie about that and, and make it good and make it successful and artistically... Um, you know, artistically neat, um, somewhat challenging in a sense, you know, it makes you wonder what family is about, and, and just, and, and growing up, and, and whatnot, and just seeing how things go in cycles, and the, yet be so mundane and simplistic at the same time, I mean, I, I thought they did a really good job at all of that. So that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel. Thank you for listening to this movie review. Next time, I'll have a manga review for Skip Beat Volumes 35 and 36, an anime review for the Hunter exam arc of Hunter by Hunter, and a movie review for the Korean movie Unstoppable. Thank you, and until next time.